We have to move on to another big story this week, which is the future of financial advice bills passing the House of Reps. Uh, not though without some very serious political toing and froing. Andrew Maynard has been following the passage of the bills, and I'm keen to get his thoughts. But first, let's hear from Mercer's Joanne Block. She spoke earlier with Andrew. We've had an absolutely fascinating week in Canberra, uh, really, about the passage of the future financial advice legislation. You wouldn't have thought it would be that controversial. Mm. But, uh, for instance, we've had a major change on whether the government is going to push for the opt-in legislation. Can you please explain to me what you think has been going on in Canberra? Yes, well, it has indeed been an exciting week. And it looks like we've got to a position where the best interests duty and, of course, the, uh, the whole issue around conflicted remuneration has uh, passed through. That means that, that's a ban on commissions? That's correct. But it, it appears that uh, there was a last-minute um, toing and froing around the issue of opt-in. And the opt-in requirement was a requirement whereby financial advisers who had clients with an ongoing service were required to get them to sign up every two years to continue that service. It looks like in a last-minute deal between the Financial Planning Association and the Industry Superannuation Network that that has now been dropped. The Minister has announced that that's been, it looks like it's going to be dropped. And, of course, there are still a lot of issues around what this really means and whether it's been dropped completely or whether there are going to be conditions around the opt-in. But I think, all in all, the most significant parts of the FOFA reform process have gone through and that's really what we should be applauding. You're saying that it doesn't spectacularly matter about opt-in uh, from your perspective compared with the, what you would call the best interest duty, the duty of the advisor to act in the best interest of the, uh, of the clients even though there was a degree of uncertainty among the planners about this and you were, of course, the chief executive of the Financial Planning Association. Yeah. Look, I really do believe that the best interest duty and banning commissions are the two most important reforms that we can achieve to inspire confidence in the whole financial planning profession. The opt-in requirement was something that has always been very controversial and it's always created a huge amount of anxiety and discussion. I think the government probably has done the right thing to put that aside uh, to get on with the major reforms that will create the most significant change and to focus on that. And Joanne, just talking about major, major changes and significant reforms, am I right in thinking that the moving of the superannuation guarantee contribution from 9% to 12%, which went through during the week, is actually a much bigger affair? Uh, yes, it is, because it affects a whole lot more people. I think the financial advice reforms were linked from the point of view that if people are going to be building a nest egg and they do seek advice, they want to get advice that they can trust and that they can believe in. But I do believe that the increase from 9 to 12 per cent is also very significant and it really sets us up to ensure that we have much greater comfort in retirement and there's a whole lot of benefits that flow from that too. When you get to my vintage, that's a very positive consideration. I'm sure it is. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne Block there talking with Andrew, who, thanks to the magic of television, is in the studio with us now.